All right, peoples, this is Ross. I thought I would take you guys through the seedlings that we started. Show you guys what the greenhouse looks like. We have uh, some fig cuttings here that are going. We also have, well, the figs are now waking up in the greenhouse. And we've got just overall very good germination. I'm really happy uh, with what we did. Obviously, we're not done. We still have a while to go. That's a pretty good site right there with all the onions. We got the broccoli sprouts done in a uh, microgreen style. We've never done that before. So I was excited about that. This is maybe only 10 days in or something. And some of this actually isn't even 10 days in. Uh, what I did notice with one of the flaws we had, because this is a totally new environment. And when you have a new environment like this, you can really struggle with getting the environment right. So if you, as an example, have too much humidity in here or not enough humidity, um, the plants, the soil can definitely start to dry out. And that's actually what's kind of been going on. As you can see, it's, it's really obvious that the seedlings towards the back of this bin have germinated reasonably well, but the seedlings towards the front have not. And the reason for that is if you look at the shelving, this part of the tray is actually hanging over the edge and therefore a lot of that drier air has coming up like this and rising and actually drying out those cells a bit quicker than actually these cells towards the back. So a bit of a nice little learning experience. This guy here has a totally solid bottom. So that wasn't an issue and it actually has more soil. That's why the germination in that is like perfect. Down here, we actually have some melons. These are squash rootstock right here that are coming up. And then I also planted melons that we're going to be grafting onto these rootstock just as a test, just to see how we do, how it's all going to work. I've never grafted annuals like this, tomatoes, cucumbers, melons. I've never done this before. I'm sure it's not that difficult, but this is a learning experience, just like starting any kind of seed in this new environment was totally new to me. So we need to make sure we can get this right. This is going to act as a chamber. I'm going to put this plastic over top. We're going to try to increase the humidity to basically 100%. If they're not 100% for about 7 to 10 days when these grafts are healing over, I'm not going to have success. So I need to really pay attention to the humidity within this dome that I'm going to set up. And hopefully we have success. Uh, but uh, these are doing their thing. It's, they take some time, unfortunately, to germinate. Same thing with these, um, these snap peas. They're taking a little bit longer than I would have liked, but this was started a few days after we did our other videos on seed starting. And the reason for that is I had the great idea because I have so many sugar snap peas um, that I've started in these trays that we're going to plant out into the garden. One of my favorite crops, by the way. You can see more of them over here. Um, I decided to start some just for shoots, kind of like a microgreen shoot. Why not have myself like a, a salad um, off of these? It's very easy to come in here, break this off, and then use this for shoots. Obviously, they need to get a bit larger, but these are really, really tasty. Very nutritious, obviously. And if I can get myself a flat of these, still got a little bit more time before these will germinate. And uh, you can see, actually, I may need to come in here. What I am going to do, actually, after I pause this, or after I stop this video, is come in here and water this stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be really nice to have a whole nice green flat of these things. We can cut them, actually, a couple times before we need to replant, which is really nice. I'm excited for it. Um, it's obviously very, very tasty. Here's some of the things we ended up getting pretty good success with. A lot of the brassicas are almost always going to germinate well, I find. Uh, we have borage that's coming up really nicely. Here we have actually parsley that hasn't come up yet at all. And I know some of these herbs can take some time. Cilantro seems to be an easy one. The basil has always been an easy one for me. I'm going to transplant this out probably and put them in pots or larger pots. 
a lot of the brassicas are going to get up potted into these inserts here that you see. That way they have a larger pot, that way they get more size. That way when I transplant them out into the garden, um, they're already more established. So some of this you know, stuff has, it's only been about 10, I don't know, maybe 12 days. Some of this has got a lot more time to go and therefore I'm, uh, I'm not really in any rush, but I do want to get this stuff out as soon as I can. So who knows what I'll do. But I know if I get them to a bigger size now, it's gonna pay off probably a bit later. Um, ideally, I think these guys need to stay not in these cells, but in a larger size, like these inserts, for about, about a month, maybe three to four weeks. And uh, then I can transplant them out into the garden. And I think that's gonna be obviously better than leaving them in these trays or even just direct seeding them for the most part. Um, here we have like things like broccoli, uh, different types of broccoli. We got Brussels sprouts. Here's actually some fennel, which I've really always struggled to germinate, but these guys came up. So I'm happy about that. Um, another, this is Brussels sprouts in this one, kohlrabi. Here's some nice looking beets. And then of course our sugar snap peas, the onions on the end. Those onions are going to stay in that tray for quite some time. Um, before I can actually transplant them out into the community garden this spring. And then of course our fig cuttings. We've actually come in here and already watered them. You can actually see some of the water down there at the bottom of the bin. Just to give them a little bit of extra water. It is very dry in this environment. So I went ahead and actually parafilmed the tops of the cuttings. And I also believe because a lot of these cuttings have been sitting outside for probably four months since I pruned them and just sitting there on the ground, they're kind of drying out on the ends. So I really did, uh, I think myself a service by coming in here and actually parafilming or waxing the tops. That's really key. So we'll keep you guys updated on this. There's not a whole lot left to do other than just to wait. Uh, we're going to start more seeds for the summer, but we still have some time to go. I still probably have another few weeks by the time some of these plants get up potted into these inserts and then are going to get transplanted out of here. Um, my summer garden seeds will be started in a very similar way to you see here. So, all right, guys, the wind is telling me it's time to go. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care and uh, I'll see you guys for the next one. Have a good one.